I'll send the PSA out right at the start of this video. Watch out for the Texas State Bobcats this season. G.J. Kenny's team got off to a hot start last year after some people figured it'd take some time to adjust. Nope, G.J. Kenny's squad was off and running. The offense was electric, and this was a very competitive team out of the Sunbelt Conference last year. And ladies and gentlemen of the college football jury, G.J. Kenny is just getting started here with the Texas State Bobcats. Can this possibly be the best team in the Sunbelt Conference in 2024? Well, you're about to find out what I think here in this video. What's up, tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tail tailgate Nate today. I want to welcome you to my channel and welcome you to prediction season. It's where I predict all 134 FBS level college football teams. And it means I'm doing your favorite team. I need you guys to hit the subscribe button, especially if you're as big of a college football nerd as I am. And if you want to hear my thoughts during the video and Hey, just want to know whenever prediction videos get up, maybe a team you're interested in ring that bell down there. It'll notify you when everything gets uploaded. I want to thank you so much for watching this video and your continued support of prediction season on the channel. Watching videos help support my channel in more ways and you can even imagine you can do more than that uh, to help support the channel and pretty much interact with it in any way you can because all of it helps support what I do here on YouTube, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, ringing the bell, of course, watching the videos and anything else you can think of, it all does mean a lot to me. Let's dive into the Texas State Bobcats, a team that I've been itching to talk about in prediction season. How do we talk about teams this year? Well, I'm glad you asked. We'll take a deep dive into the team's offense, into the defense, and at the end of the video, we will go through the Texas State football schedule and we'll give it a game-by-game -game preview and prediction. Do have a couple more things before we do start because right over here are going to be the stats the team put up either offensively or defensively last season. And of course, for your viewing pleasure, right below the team's logo, I have put the team's coaching staff. We'll waste no more time. Let's dive on in. Talking about the Texas State Bobcats, Bobcats and boy howdy was this a fun offense to watch last season. G.J. Kinney, known for his really good offenses when he was the head coach of Incarnate Word. He brought that system right over here to San Marcos with the Texas State Bobcats. And boy, again, was it fun to watch. Over 450 yards per game. The rush game was great. The pass game was great. And this was one of the better offenses in the Sun Belt Conference from last season. I'll tell you the problem area on this team when we get to talking about the defense. But we got to talk about the offense right now because, well, I'm kind of thinking it might even be better than it was last season. At the very least, I think it's more talented, and it starts with the quarterback position. TJ Finley is gone. He's bounced around through a lot of programs, but found himself a very, very good place here with the Texas State Bobcats. 3,439 yards, 24 touchdowns, and eight interceptions for him last season. Really was a pretty darn good quarterback here for this team. He did have five rushing touchdowns as well, but not much of a runner. He has transferred over to Western Kentucky for, I believe, his final season of collegiate eligibility. So what does your quarterback room look like? Well, yeah, P.J. Hatter comes back, but you weren't going to roll with him as the starting quarterback. At least that's what G.J. Kinney was thinking. He went into the portal and got an absolute stud because Jordan McLeod is coming over from James Madison, and he just had an exceptional season with the James Madison Dukes last year. 3,657 yards, 35 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions for Jordan McLeod last season. He'd bounced around between USF, Arizona. He landed with uh, James Madison, and his final season of collegiate eligibility will be spent in an electric offensive system. He will be your starter here in 2024. At least that is my full, healthy expectation. Yes, you have RJ Martinez, who's coming in as well. He's over from Baylor. Jane Dolores coming over from the Arizona Wildcats. But undoubtedly, in my opinion, Jordan McLeod gives this team the best chance to win. I think he's the most talented quarterback in this room. The statistics prove it. And Jordan McLeod is going to lead a very explosive offensive team here for the Texas State Bobcats. It's time to take a look at the talent that is going to be around him. And does he have some really good options? But you got to talk about the running back room and what they lost first. Well, they did lose some pretty solid pieces. Your second leading rusher in Dontario Davenport with 458 yards, a couple touchdowns is gone from last season. And Jamal Jeter, a guy that had nine rushing touchdowns last year, but only 176 yards regardless nine of his 42 carries were touchdowns last season you also do lose a depth piece in calvin hill who had 98 yards on 31 carries last season so you do lose some fairly solid talent out of this running back room again most notably in davenport and jeter uh, but hill a fairly solid piece that leaves as well so your returner here in this room ismail Mahdi, a 1300 yard rusher last season on 223 carries had 1331 yards and 10 touchdowns rushing the football last season you pair him with lincoln and pair 
coming back here. And Lincoln Pair might be more of a depth piece in this running back room this season just because of what they brought in through the portal. Now, the Lincoln Pair can have some really good carries this season, but when you take a look at the talent coming in through the transfer portal, I mean, man, oh man, do they, this Texas State team just did really, really well in the transfer portal this season. They bring in Deion Hankins. He had 800 yards rushing for the UTEP Miners last year. Jalen Jenkins, I believe, also a UTEP transfer that is coming into this program. And you all, oh no, sorry, Jalen Jenkins is coming over from Washington State. Torrance Burgess Jr. is the other U, uh, UTEP transfer. But nonetheless, Deion Hankins paling him with Ismail Mahdi. I mean, that's a pretty good one-two punch in the running back room. Again, a lot of these guys could see carries in 2024 wide receiver room well this does this is where you get to some of the bigger losses here because there are some really solid pieces that leave this room including ashton hawkins a very talented weapon 874 yards three touchdowns on 55 catches last season and a converted quarterback into a wide receiver malik hornsby was a quarterback for the team last year but transferred out as a wide receiver over to arkansas state so that's why you see him where he does he's a pretty good athlete in his own right not much receiving yards last season season only one catch for him again mainly a quarterback last year but Ashton Hawkins leaving that's a pretty big blow to this offense but you don't lose anyone out of the tight end room so what does the pass catching room look like for G.J. Kinney's squad in 2024 well Joey Hober and Cole Wilson are coming back two very 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 reliable targets last season 76 catches 895 yards and tied for the team lead with eight touchdowns was Joey Hobert Cole Wilson. He also had eight touchdowns last year, 66 catches for 747 yards, both of them hovering right around 11 and a half yards per yards per catch last season. Drew Donnelly and Chris Don also return. And what do you know? More pieces come in through the transfer portal. Uh, you are getting Jaden Williams coming over from Boston College and Bo Sparks is a guy coming over from Utah Tech, formerly known as Dixie State, an FCS level program. Connor Fox and Titus Lyons are back in this tight end room. Connor Fox, 117 yards in the touchdown last season. Uh, Lyons, a depth piece last year that didn't see too much playing time, but did have five catches last year. He's coming back. And again, I mean, more pieces through the portal. Blake Smith is coming over from Oklahoma. You're also getting a Griffin Moore, who's coming over from Illinois. And one piece I didn't even mention, Jalen Griffin is a two-lane transfer, but I also think could see some pretty big minutes here in the Texas State wide receiver room in 2024. Now, you do lose a lot off the offensive line. Bray Walker, Caleb Johnson, Jane Smith, all guys that saw really good snaps and a lot of playing time for the Bobcat offensive line last year have all graduated, and Marcus Alexander has gone through the portal. So Nash Jones, Dorian Strong, Chase Todd, Jameto, and Omeka Obigo, uh, Obigbo. My apologies, I don't know where that first pronunciation came from, but the Obigbo brothers are back. Again, Jones, Strawn, uh, Strawn and Todd also come back, while Talek Lockett likely will be a starter, transferring on the offensive line. There are a lot more transfers coming in. David Connor from Colorado, Martin Time from Cal, uh, so a couple others in there as well. The offensive line may very well be the biggest question mark on this offense as now you get into talking about overall. They allowed 30 sacks last year, and they lost a lot of talent off of last year's team. But Jordan McLeod, this running back room, this wide receiver room, I mean, the talent here is really, really good. And again, with Jordan McLeod manning the helm, with all due respect to what TJ Finley did with this team last year, I think Jordan McLeod is just going to be better. We could see him throw for 4,000 yards this season. That wouldn't surprise me at all. And Texas State, again, as long as the offensive line can have some consistency, can be pretty good this year, Texas State has all the makings to be one of the most electric offenses in college football this season, mark my words. The issue last year, though, came on the defensive side. If the offense wasn't clicking, well, you really couldn't rely on this defense to close things out. That's probably going to end up having to change here in 2024, but it's going to be a little bit of a tricky thing to do, especially considering a lot of talent off of last year's team does leave. We'll start out with the defensive line. A couple graduation uh, pieces, or I guess a couple pieces do leave due to graduation. Jordan Rebels and Chance Main are both gone. Uh, you take a look at what they both did last season. Rebels, 39 tackles and two sacks for the team last season. And you go down to Chance Main. Uh, both these guys coming off the edge, by the way. 25 tackles in the sack and a half for Maine last year, while Myrie and Warren, another pretty solid piece to this defensive line room, nine tackles last year, but was fairly effective when he came into play, is gone through the transfer portal. So what does that mean for your defensive line? Well, Ben Bell is coming back. Your leading tackler among defensive line last uh, defensive line men last year had 57 tackles and led the team with 10 sacks. That is well more than double that uh, the number that anyone else had in the sack department last season. Team that had 38 sacks last year gets almost a third of them back with Ben Bell. Tavis 
Davian Coleman, Dominique Ratcliffe, Devin Wright, and Terry Webb also all come back, while Stephen Parker, Alex Merritt, and I will butcher this name entirely, and I apologize sincerely, but Amy Poli uh, Polisi Lange, I know I probably butchered that one, but that's what I got for you. Uh, they all come in through the transfer portal. Linebacker room. Well, Brian Holloway, your leading tackler is gone. No more eligibility for him. He has graduated 105 tackles. He broke triple digits and led the team with four interceptions, including two pick sixes last year. If that's not an impact player on the defense, I don't know what is. That's a big loss for the Bobcat defense. While you do lose a couple other guys, Dan Foster, who is a top five tackler for the team, is gone through the portal. 52 tackles for him last season. You also do lose Josh Emmanuel, who had double-digit tackles last season as a depth piece in the linebacker room. So, who does return in the linebacker room? Well, not many players. Kenny Haynes is definitely by far the biggest returner that this linebacker room sees. 19 tackles in the sack from last year. So, a lot of this linebacker room will be built through the transfer portal. Your entire two deep, according to rlads.com, is sitting in front of you through the portal. Manny Nanari is the biggest name that comes in through the portal in this linebacker room. He's coming over from the Florida Gators. Oh, but it just starts there. Traylon Payne, Max Harris, James Neal, they all come in. I'll tell you where they are all coming from. Neal coming over from UTEP. Harris is coming over from University of Louisiana Monroe. And Payne is coming over from Houston. All of them really solid production at their former programs, and they all will see really substantial playing time in the linebacker room for the Bobcats in 2024. Defensive back room, couple solid losses leave this, or a couple solid, solid why can't I talk today? A couple solid pieces leave this secondary. Caleb Ford Dement does leave. He is the lone uh, piece on the defense, to my knowledge at least, that has gone off to the NFL. Ford Dement out of the cornerback room last season. 32 tackles, one sack, had seven pass defended, which was second on the team, and three interceptions, also second on the team. Only notable loss out of the cornerback room, but definitely probably the biggest loss that you could have had out of that room last season. I should say entering this season as well. Safety room, Sean Holton is going to be graduated. Second leading tackler had 92 tackles, a pass defended, and a couple picks last season, while Ronnie Hamrick is also gone uh, due to the transfer portal. Sorry, did I say transfer portal earlier? No, Sean Holton has run out of eligibility. He's graduated. It is Hamrick who has entered the portal. 21 tackles for him last season. So cornerback room and safety room. Who returns in the secondary in 2024? Will Chris Mills and Joshua Eaton return in the cornerback room while Justin Harris and Trez Moore are some pretty talented transfers that come into this program? Caleb Culp, Alonzo Edwards, Caleb Coleman, Tori Spears, and Bobby Crosby, all pretty good players in the safety room for Texas State last year. They all come back. Uh, and no notable transfers in the safety room, although Harrison Moore, maybe you could see him play safety, but overall they will definitely be used to provide depth to this cornerback room, if not get starting minutes in 2024. And kickers are people too. Let's show them some love. Seamus O'Kelly was a punter last season, so there should be the P that gets put in front of there, but he is gone off of last year's team, while David Nunez comes back to do the punting duties, and your primary place kicker and Mason Shipley, Mason Shipley returns from last season. I had to put that P in front of Seamus O'Kelly to signify he was a punter. Love the name. Very good punter last season. He, of course, again, gone due to graduation. So overall, when you talk about this defense, look, this is the side of the ball that you're looking to get better for Texas State here in 2024. But overall, I think if everything goes right and the transfer portal pieces fit in nicely, you should see some improvement, especially out of the linebacker room, especially out of some of these defensive back rooms in, uh, I say, in San Marcos this upcoming season. Again, if everything fits in well, the defense should get slightly better, and it's just a product of being in the system here as well, but this is the side of the ball you need to watch for Texas State. Well, yes, you need to watch the offense. It's going to be explosive, but if this side of the ball can improve, well, you're looking at a very dangerous team here in 2024, and that means now we get to take a look at the Texas State football schedule this upcoming season. We'll tell you how we break it down here. Any game at home is going to be underlined while any game on the road is in italics. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's that slanted text. Any game you see in green is going to be a game that I think the Bobcats are going to win pretty easily. Any game in yellow will be a close competitive game, but one that I still think the Bobcats is able to win. And any game in red is a loss. There is a neutral site game. It is listed accordingly, and they start off with a game against Lamar University. Now, Lamar should be a pretty easy win here for this team. This is a great opportunity to get some of these defensive transfers settled in and to get this offense a lot of the pieces settled in. Jordan McLeod entered into the system and to get this team on a roll in here in 2024 because this is a very manageable non-conference slate here, especially for the talent this Texas State team has offensively. 
UTSA is probably going to end up being one of the better teams in the American Athletic Conference, but I do see Texas State winning this game. Again, I think the offense is going to be a little bit too much for UTSA's defense to handle. They lost many a key contributors last season, especially in that secondary and especially early in the year where you need some of those depth pieces, you need some of those transfers to kind of just fit in and start to work their way into the system. I think UTSA struggles to defend Jordan McLeod in this passing game, and Texas State picks up a big win at home against a team that's been really good in the college football scene for quite some time, and that is a win, a way to start out 2-0. and Then you get to play a Power 5 team, or I should say Power 4 team. Now on your schedule, a new member of the Big 12 Conference, it's the Arizona State Sun Devils. Just talked about them earlier today, and you would know I'm not too confident on the Sun Devils this year. While I think Kenny Dillingham's group will make slight improvements in certain areas, I don't think it's going to translate that well overall into the record books. They've got a situation to figure out in their quarterback room. There's a lot of talent that's going to be leaving that team and some new talent coming in. I don't think Arizona State is fully settled. Plus, Texas State was able to beat Baylor on the road last season. Now, Baylor was not a very good team last year. I don't expect Arizona State to be a very good team this year. And this one, they get at home on a weekday. The recipe is all there. I think Texas State, for the second straight year, beats a Big 12 opponent, and they start out 3-0. and And why not? They go through conference play undefeated. Sam Houston really struggled last season in their first year as a member of the FBS second year I think things will get marginally better but overall I don't see them competing especially with the offense that Texas State will possess to me that is a win for the Texas State Bobcats so by the way that game is in Houston after your first bye week of the college football season then you have to go on the road you play your first road game of the season against the Troy Trojans and I do th- I do think this one is going to be very tricky for Texas State to win. A, they haven't had a true road game all season long. This is the sixth week of the season. And yes, John Sumrall leaves. Kamani Vidal leads. A ton of defensive pieces leave. Troy gets decimated through the portal. I know, I know, I know. Still got a lot of solid pieces offensively. Some really good pieces transfer into the offensive line. I still think they have a really so- uh, solid wide r- receiver core. And the defense returns a ton of a pretty solid or defense gets back a ton of pretty solid pieces. But the thing I was going to say was they were they get a ton in through the transfer portal that I think is really going to help them this year. On top of it being a weekday road game, Texas state has not seen a road environment yet. And Troy is one of the more hostile ones in the Sunbelt conference. I do have this being a loss for Texas state. I think the defense again can see marginal improvements this year, but it might definitely cost them some games. And while Troy is not a team that is going to light the building on fire in terms of offensive production. I think they're going to have a pretty solid offense this year. And I think looking back on it, the defense probably going to come up with a a couple uh, turnovers. They will beat Texas state in my opinion to hand the Bobcats their first loss this season, but it's okay. Schedule still very manageable. Arkansas state will be a competitive team this season, getting some transfers in. uh, Of course, Uh, Malik Hornsby is transferred over there as a wide receiver, former, former Texas state quarterback from last season. And Hey, that's a team trending in the right direction. They'll be one of the better teams in uh, the, this division of the Sunbelt Conference. But overall, I still see this being a win for Texas State. Offense will be too much, uh, much like the Bobcats. The Red Wolves got a lot of defensive issues to figure out. That's a win for Texas State. On the road against Old Dominion, I think it's going to be tough as well. Overall, a fairly solid team in the Sun Belt Conference that I could see, uh, well, sliding in either direction. They could be pretty solid, or they could uh, end up falling back down to earth a little bit. They lose a lot of pieces through the transfer portal, though. But again, Much like a lot of teams this year, I just think the Texas State offense will overpower the Monarchs and Texas State will win that game. Same thing here with the Raging Cajuns. This one, a weekday game after your second bye week of the year on a Tuesday. Uh, Louisiana, I still think going to be a fairly solid team this year, but I have Texas State winning that one and we're moving on here to a road game in week 11 against ULM. Not going to be a very good team in the Sunbelt Conference this year. A lot of solid pieces leave that team through the transfer portal as well. And ULM will go down to Texas State. They are 8-1 and one through the first 11 weeks of the college football season. Rumblings and things are getting serious now that, hey, this is a Texas State team. Could push for a spot in a college football playoff role. And they have two very manageable home games coming up here in week 12 and week 13. And I think you win both of them. I think you're going to beat the Southern Miss Golden Eagles at home, a team that lost Frank Gore, a team that was not very good last season, lost a lot of very solid pieces. And defensively, they won't keep up with Texas State's offensive assault. That'll be a win for the Bobcats. And I also think you beat Georgia State. Now watch out for the Panthers because usually that's a team that's pretty competitive and pretty resilient to losses well they did lose their head coach sean elliott this year a lot of other ton of a lot of other really talented pieces including that running back carroll are gone 
Georgia State probably a team that's going to see their fair share of struggles in the Sun Belt Conference this year. To me, that's a win for the Texas State Bobcats. Then you have to go on the road and play the South Alabama Jaguars in week 14. And much like the Troy game, this is another one where I can easily see Texas State slipping up. And while I am high on this Bobcat team, I do think South Alabama is going to win. Now, I think they have a better case for Troy, especially offensively, because even though Carter Bradley is gone, even though a couple other offensive pieces are gone here, your wide receiver room still looking very good in 2024. Devin Voison, Javen Ivory, they both return. Uh, the, to, to my knowledge, and when you go ahead and take a look at just what the South Alabama team is going to be about offensively, yes, Cam Womack is gone, but Major Applewhite, the offensive coordinator from last year, takes over, and the Texas State defense, I think, struggles to defend South Alabama, so that's a loss on the road, so we're overall, I have Texas State at 10-2, and two. but you can make the argument here on why the Bobcats can win every single game. I think the ceiling for this team is an undefeated record, and if that is the case, you very well could see them in the college football playoff conversation. Very high on this team, if the defense can take some steps in the right direction, the ceiling can be reached. But I got 10 and 2 for the Bobcats. They'll be one of the better teams in the Sun Belt Conference this season with a very manageable schedule. That's all I got for Texas State. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Remember to play hard but tailgate harder. We got two Power Four teams left. We'll do them tomorrow, starting with the Vanderbilt Commodores. Goodbye.